morning, everyone. How about we pray in the chapel of divine mercy to prepare for Mass? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Chaplet of divine mercy, you expire, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the living and the dead. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Offer this first decade of the chapter for deliverance from the pandemic and all its negative effects. For the sake of the sorrowful passion, for the sake of the sorrowful passion, for the sake of the sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Now for the second um, decade for all those who are struggling with mental illness, especially those that are struggling with suicidal thoughts, temptations to suicide, that Jesus may rescue them with his mercy. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. We offer this decade for our nation, for healing in our nation, especially as we approach the fall election. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 
for the sake of a sorrowful passion. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity unto your gift, the love of Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. We offer this decade for all families that are experiencing division, unforgiveness, hardness of heart, for all marriages that are struggling, that are experiencing unforgiveness and hardness of heart. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of a sorrowful passion. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dear beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. We offer this last decade of the chapel for mercy upon the whole world, for all the offenses against the dignity of human life, for the sins of abortion, for the sins of poverty, for the sins of abuse and cruelty, for the sins of war, for all those things that have offended the dignity of the human person. For the sake of a sorrowful passion. 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 Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world together. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair, nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Saint Faustina. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Make sure you grab a bulletin on all the readings and the songs are in the bulletin. Our opening hymn is Sing to the Mountains. So that. A couple of things I want to highlight in the bulletin is uh, I don't have one in front of me. Now. Bless it. Oh, faith formation families are opening mass is this Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday evening. Tonight we're having our first high school formation session. That's going to be tonight, 6:30 mass. Yeah, I think that's all she wrote. We'll start mass in a few moments. I just want to ask, what's that shiny thing that's shining on the table? What is that?
Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The readings are on page six. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside, remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a spam call. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, 
They were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. How many people here have been to the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe in La Crosse, Wisconsin? Who have been there? Oh, good. Go there again. It's a very peaceful place to spend a Sunday or a Saturday. When you get to the Shrine Church, there are six original commission paintings that were arranged specifically for that church. And they're the side altars that have modern saints. And if you get in the Shrine Church, you go to the second side altar on the left, is the image and shrine to St. Maria Goretti. And it's a very unique painting there of a depiction of St. Maria Goretti. And it gets at a detail of her life that most people don't know. St. Maria Goretti was a virgin martyr. She lived in the 1900s in Italy from a poor family. When she was 13 years old, the neighbor boy, who was 19 years old, wanted to be with Maria and attempted to sexually assault Maria, but Maria refused, guarding her virginity. And in anger, Alessandro, the neighbor, stabbed her 12 times and actually killed her. And on her deathbed, Maria forgave Alessandro, and Alessandro was sent to prison. But the second part that's depicted in the painting at the shrine is something that's very powerful, and it gets at the Gospel. Twenty years after Alessandro lived his term, they actually released him. But before that happened, he had a vision, a dream, I think it was, of Maria Goretti. And in the dream, Maria gives Alessandro twelve lilies to him. One lily for every time that he stabbed her. And the lily represented chastity and purity. And that experience changed Alessandro's life, and he went back to his Catholic faith. And he came out of prison. His parents were dead. His family had scattered. He was all alone in the world. So he asked the local parish priest if he could live with him at the rectory until he could get his own place. And the priest agreed. So the, he left prison and went to the rectory and knocked on the back door of the rectory's house. And who answered the door? Maria Goretti's mother, who was the cook and housekeeper of the rectory. She opened the door and embraced Alessandro and said, Welcome home. And in 1950, when Maria Goretti was canonized, Maria's mother, and Alessandro sat next to each other at the canonization of St. Maria Goretti. Would you call that forgiveness? It's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. I think of another example in our own life, or some of our lives when we were alive, 1981, Pope John Paul II was shot in St. Peter's Square, almost died. Three months after his recovery, he went to the prison and forgave the one who shot him. Crazy. How, how can he do that? The reason why I mention crazy is because I think there's a lot of people that are on edge right now. The effects of the pandemic, politics, racial injustice, rioting, this fomenting. It affected down in Dubuque. They took down the statue of Bishop Morris. All this chaos, division among people. 
And my reflection has been, I think that's crazy. The division, the hatred, the contempt that we have for one another. I think there's a new definition of a mixed marriage. You know what the new definition of a mixed marriage is? When a Democrat marries a Republican. It's the definition of a new mixed marriage. Right? And what is the only sane thing in this world right now is what we have just heard today. The way of forgiveness is the only way out of chaos, out of resentment, out of bitterness, out of violence. It's the only way that you actually can achieve justice is the way of forgiveness. And that's what Jesus offers today. He offers forgiveness. Aren't you like Peter? I love Peter. I just love the man. I just want to. When we get to the pearly gates, I may get sidetracked talking to Peter for a couple hundred years. I don't want to talk to him first for a while. Because he asks all the questions that, that you and I want to ask the Lord. What will there be there for us? We've given up everything and followed you. And then here's today. How often do I got to forgive my brother? There's got to be a limit, Jesus. Come on. Right? In the day of Jesus' time, the rabbis taught four times. If your brother sinned against you, you, could, you had to offer forgiveness four times. That's it. Then Peter says, hey, how about seven? That's pretty good. And Jesus said, no. Seven, seventy-seven times. The number seven, how many sacraments are there? Seven. Completeness. The seven days of creation, right? Seventy-seven, which means every time. Every time your brother comes to you and is sorry for what he's done, you are to forgive him from your heart. Not just say, oh, don't worry about it. Then walk away and be filled with resentment towards the person. Is to freely say, I forgive you, to name the evil that had been done and say, I'm not going to hold that against you anymore. That's what forgiveness is. We need it. In a world, as Cardinal George once said, the former bishop of Chicago, God rest his soul, he said, The world allows everything but forgives nothing. The world allows everything but forgives nothing. Whereas the Lord has expectations for us if we follow after him, but he has great mercy when we fail, which we will, and that's okay. The humility to say, I am sorry. When's the last time you went to confession and the priest didn't give you absolution? It's never happened to me. Every time I go, he says, I absolve you of your sins. I'm like, sometimes I just want to stop. I'm like, are you sure God wants to do that? I've said the same thing now for the last 15 years. And, and you, you're going to forgive me again? Yeah. Isn't that kind of baffling? And then we wouldn't offer that to our neighbor? You can see why the king gets angry. I forgave you the whole loan. And you don't forgive the person who only owes you 20 bucks. Forgiveness. When we truly experience forgiveness, we, we but have to share it. Because it's a piece that, that, uh, that we've been given. So uh, moving forward, I really think that there are two places in which forgiveness really has to be practiced, or it's not gonna have a lasting effect on other relationships that we have in our lives. And I think the first place that forgiveness has to be practiced is in marriage. Marriage, uh, one way of looking at marriage is a lifelong commitment to forgive your spouse. That's what it is, it's a lifelong commitment to forgive your spouse. I love asking the question to engage couples, what aspects of your spouse annoys you about them? You know? What annoys you about your spouse? What are things that you don't like about your spouse? 
And I'm always concerned when a couple says, oh, there's nothing that bothers me about my spouse. I'm like, well, I'll see you next year. You know? That, that radical acceptance of the other that needs to be present in marriage. Or else you won't be able to teach your kids about forgiveness. That's one of the things that made me sad about my parents' marriage. They had a hard time forgiving each other. Man, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the desire to always want to be right. But sometimes when they would fight, they'd bring up wounds 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I kind of think to myself, how do you remember that? You tell they didn't let it go. That was part of the struggle, the suffering of their marriage. They just weren't able to forgive each other sometimes. That's the first place. The second place I really think we have to practice forgiveness, or it's going to be really fruitless in other areas, is, is our families. It's been a very sad thing to learn over the last five years how many families are broken and divided in our four marriages. It's more than you realize. Fighting over farms, fighting over stuff, fighting over that mom loved you more than mom loved me. Hatred that's present. My God. You really want to hold on to that? Is that really that pleasurable to hold on to all that? There's a little bit of pleasure holding on to a grudge. But really? You're going to go possibly to hell over holding that resentment? We have to do that for one another, for our families. How can we expect them to forgive the neighbor that we don't know? How are we going to forgive them? So forgiveness is for us. It only takes one person to forgive. Last week is more complicated. It takes two people to reconcile. It takes two people. But for forgiveness, it's, 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 it's just yourself. Okay, what they did to me was wrong. It hurt. Ow. Ouch, Lord. But I don't want to hold it against you. I don't want to do that. That's the piece of forgiveness that Jesus is offering us. It's the only way out of insanity. Right? Jesus, he says from the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. The most powerful prayer I've probably uttered, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He overlooks our faults that put him on the cross. And that's what it means to be a person of forgiveness. It's really the way to peace. And we need God in order to do it. If you try to do it on your own, you'll end up resentful. But if you do it with God, God will give you the peace that he wants to offer every person who's willing to let go of the hurt given to them. So it's not forgive and forget. I think that's a bunch of baloney. I don't believe in it. Forgive and forget is forgive and remember differently. That's what forgiveness is. It's not forgetting what happened to you. It's allowing God to let you look at it with a merciful gaze instead of the gaze of pain that we sometimes have. I find that very good news, brothers and sisters. I just find it so liberating and so joyful that we get to act like God and forgive the people that have hurt. So today as you come to the altar, I invite you to think about the people that have hurt you in your life, that maybe continue to hurt you, that have offended you, that have wounded you. Ask for the grace to forgive them each day, that God may give you his peace. Amen. How about we now stand and profess the faith together? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
Be God not made unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in our Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He and the seat at the right hand of God. And his kingdom will happen. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is born of the Lord, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess for baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As members of the body of Christ joined together in love through the death and resurrection by which Jesus obtains the forgiveness of our sins, let us pray. For a spirit of true and sincere forgiveness in our homes, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, and in our world, we pray to the Lord. For the courage to forgive as we have been forgiven in Christ, we pray to the Lord. For those who have angered us, grant them peace, we pray to the Lord. For those who have harmed our loved ones, grant them your forgiveness and ours, we pray to the Lord. For those whose hearts are hardened against forgiving, grant them healing, we pray to the Lord. For the deliverance from the pandemic and all its negative effects, we pray to the Lord. For our nation, as we approach the fall election, for wisdom upon all voters, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering, for the hospitalized, and those who are most in need of our prayers at this moment, we pray to the Lord. And for all the faithful departed, today we remember at Mass, Joyce Schindelar, Anna Mae Lennon, and Merle and Marie Chisel. May they and all the faithful departed may see the face of God, we pray to the Lord. God of mercy and compassion, you have forgiven our sins through the death and resurrection of Jesus, which we remember with special gratitude on this holy day of worship. Remake our own hearts in his likeness, that we may forgive and love all those who offend us, as you have forgiven and loved us through the same Christ our Lord. Please be seated as we prepare the altar. Our next hymn is where charity and love prevail. The plastic tubs are at the entrances to the church for your offering. <laughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your kingdom, the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all his holy church, and for the good of the world, 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 and for the good of
Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as you turn back to you, as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Is bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to one another the wave of peace to one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my but only 
How precious is your mercy, O God! The children of men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings. Please be seated as we go over Holy Communion. So it's just going to be me today with the distributing Holy Communion. I'll be in the front here. Everyone's invited to come forward. Uh, let's alternate each pew and uh, make sure you're distancing from one another. The sides will go first. And our uh, hymn will be um, Loving and Forgiving. <coughs> Uh, that'll be on page 7. And for those watching on the live stream right now, we'll do the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. So loving and forgiving is our community.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hope all of you have a wonderful Sunday, hopefully a rest, and maybe a Bloody Mary's waiting for you at home, who knows? Uh, one thing uh, that we are doing this weekend is we're having uh, an opportunity to buy uh, yard signs as a fundraiser for St. Teresa's School. There's one right outside my rectory. It's Peace Begins With a Smile. So if you'd like to do that, Brandon Chisel, it will be outside, outside in the parking lot area if you'd like to do that. We're also uh, offering uh, decals you can put on your car. So um, doing that effort as another way of uh, supporting our school. So I think that's all she wrote. Everything else is in the bulletin. I hope you have a very good day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. We'll do the prayer of St. Michael in protection from all evil, we pray. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our last song is... There's a wideness in God's mercy on page 7 in your bulletin.